Okay, so in this video, I'd like to try to explain the Fourier transform in a very intuitive and simple manner. So this is the definition of the Fourier transform of a function g of t, which is just some waveform or signal or whatever you want it to be. And so this Fourier transform looks very complicated, integrals and complex numbers and all that, but it turns out it's actually somewhat intuitive and pretty simple. So the goal of this uh, video is to explain this uh, without much math, just explain what the Fourier transform is and why it's so important. So the Fourier transform in English states that any function g of t can be decomposed into the sum of simple sinusoids. So what that means is you could take any function, g of t, and, and uh, decompose it into a sum of uh, sine and cosine functions. So a sine function is simply just a you know, wave-like function that moves like this. This is, uh, has a period of one-half, which means the frequency is one-half. Sorry, the period then is two. And then the difference between sine and cosine is just cosine is uh, shifted half a, a quarter of a period away from the sine. So here's a cosine function. Uh, this one, the frequency is one. Uh, that means one cycle uh, per second. And it just starts at a peak and goes down and repeats. Sine starts at t equals zero at, uh, um, at zero. So the Fourier transform basically gives us a method of decomposing any function g of t into the sum of sine and cosine functions. So the sine and cosine functions then are the building blocks for all waveforms. And so to give you an idea, uh, to give you some intuition on that, let's take a look at an example. Okay, so here we have... Um, somewhat arbitrary function. So this curve right here, we'll just call an arbitrary function. Um, and what I want to do is show how this can be built up from sine and cosine function. So using the Fourier transform, you can find uh, what's called the first uh, fundamental uh, frequency, which is the lowest frequency that, that this waveform is made up of. And that's this cosine function uh, right here. Uh, so it has an amplitude of 0.3. So we plot this waveform along with the first component, and we get that. And it doesn't really look like it's adding up, but we'll see. So then we find the second fundamental frequency, uh, which is here, this sine wave, because it starts at zero. And we add the first two together, and we begin to see that this starts to approximate uh, the waveform that we originally started with. So going farther, we take a look at the, find the third frequency, which is a smaller sign here. We add the first three components together, and we see it starts to get very close. The fourth fundamental frequency is here. So we see the frequency of these building blocks is increasing. And by the time we add the fourth one in here, we end up with exactly the original waveform. So you might think this um, example is kind of made up. It is, but in general, you can take any function, no matter how complicated, you can look at the pressure amplitude of my voice as a function of time and decompose that signal into a sum of sine and cosine functions. And it tells you exactly where the energy in the signal is located in terms of frequency or the sinusoidal building blocks. Okay, so let's go back to the Fourier transform this function here. And, and talk about it again. So the Fourier transform takes a function g of t. Now it can be anything. Any real world thing, varying fast, slowly, whatever. It's just a function. And the Fourier transform takes this. Take this operation in terms of function g of f. And g of f might be is some other uh, function that might look like this. And this tells you where the energy is. So here might be 10 hertz. Here might be 20. It says a lot of the energy is here. 
and then above 30 hertz, for instance, there's not much energy. This has a vast application in electronics, audio processing, signal processing, uh, medical imaging, anything you can think of, the Fourier transform comes into play. So it's very useful to give you a different representation of a signal that is actually more useful. This is useful not just from application standpoint, which is used extensively, but also from like a theoretical standpoint, just understanding the world and being able to make sense of things. Okay, let's take a look at another example. So we'll look at the square pulse function, g of t, also called the rectangle function. Basically it's zero up until uh, some time, let's call it t equals minus three, it jumps up to one, and then it stays at one constant until some other time, and drops back down, and goes to zero. So if we take the Fourier transform of this, um, what we're doing then, remember, is all we're doing is finding a different representation for the signal. So we're saying, what are the building blocks in terms of sine and cosine functions that make up this uh, signal? And that, then, we take the Fourier transform and we end up with g of f. g of f is sine f over f, which is also called the sinc function. And here is what this function looks like. So this shows that the energy in the pulse function dies off with frequency. That means more energy is contained in lower frequencies and higher frequencies, and it gives you an idea of how quickly the energy dies off, where the energy is concentrated. So G of T and G of F are known as a Fourier transform pair. Now they are different representations of the exact same thing. If you have this information, you can figure out what the function is in time, and if you have the function in time, you can figure out what the Fourier transform is, or the spectrum, G of F. Okay. So if we go back to the original definition, we can see it's, it still looks complicated. You know, g of f is this integral of the function times this exponential complex number. Uh, looks formidable. So what are the complex number i? I mean, what does that tell you? All the complex number here tells you is what the phase are between the sine and cosine function. So it just makes the math a little easier and... Uh, that's the only reason they're there. It's not because this is like a complex, imaginary uh, transformation. It's not. It's just there to give you phase information. Um, and then you also notice you end up with negative frequencies. That's another thing that makes the Fourier transform seem really complicated. But again, those are just there to make the complex numbers make sense. And these are all just to make the math uh, simpler. Now... And so in summary, though, the Fourier transform is just a mathematical operation that takes a time function and rewrites it as the sum of simple sinusoids. And that's all it is. It is very useful. Um, so for further information, check out the FourierTransform.com, and I go through a lot of this stuff, uh, the mathematical operations, that, and give a list of Fourier transform pairs.